Guys, welcome to the Kingfisher Trace Clinic. Today I'm going to be showing you how to tie our cooter traces that we manufacture here at Kingfisher. Just to go through it quickly with you, what we do sell here at Kingfisher is our live bait um, cuda traces. We have them in small, medium and large for live bait. We also have our cuda flashes in small, medium and large. And then of course we've got the squids in small, medium and large. Just to run through again when I say small, medium and large, the small ones are ideal for your smaller baits like your small mackerels, your mozzies, um, your red eyes. Your mediums are ideal for the bigger size mackerel that we use um, and our larges would be more for shared bonitos. Okay, And of course those very big um, winter mackerel that we get down here in KZN. To go through it, what we use to manufacture these traces would be the American Fishing Wire size 6, which is the lead part of our actual trace, and all of them are 90 centimeters in length. Between the hooks is our number 7 American Fishing Wire. The hooks that we use for the large is a size 2, 3, 5, 9, 9C. It's a 4 extra strong. And for the medium and small, we use the size 4s. All of them have a lead hook done with a hoodlum, size 2 -0. and of course it's an inline, so in other words it's straight. The swivel that we use is the number 5 power swivel. To make these traces, I'm going to start off with doing a live bait one. Um, I'm going to use a medium, so I'll just run through it. Just to let you know that the hook sequence for a size small, um, for the size small, is eight centimeters from the lead hook, which would be that hook there, to where the treble is. So that'll be eight centimeters, the first small little section that we do. The second section would be 12. So the second hook is 12 centimeters. For the medium, the first hook is nine centimeters and 16 to the second hook. The large, which is this one over here, the lead hook to the first uh, treble is 12 and then to the second is 21. So you can see there's a big difference in the size of um, trace that we have here, small, medium and large. I'm going to make the medium. I'm just going to remove all the stuff here quickly. Okay, I've basically removed our trace from the packaging and as you can see, from the power swivel, over here to where the first lead hook starts is 90 centimeters of number six wire. Between the lead hook and the first treble we use number seven and the reason being when the cooter bites on your mackerel or whatever bait it is that you're using it's not going to bite through the number seven wire. Um, obviously they're done with haywire twists, so they actually work very well. I'm just going to put this away and show you how to do our own one. The components that we require to do the medium um, cuda trace is our power swivel, our 2 0 hoodlum, and our two number four, four extra strong trebles. And of course, our little glow bead. The reason we use our glow bead for our live bait instead of our cooter flasher or squid is that the cooter flasher gets caught inside the gills of your live bait and obviously you will kill it the same as the squid the tentacles of the rubber squids get caught in the the gills and actually kills it so live bait one little glow bead which will sit on the front of the nose hook and that basically will just keep a little bit of bling to it so that the cooter can find it. It's something different, um, something to attract the actual cooter with the live bait. Okay, so let's start. 
Number six wire. This is our American fishing wire. I'm going to take off about 90 centimeters. I'm going to measure it up quickly so I get it right. There to there, 90. You do a little bit longer than 90, so I'm making it that much longer than 90. That's going to be for my hay wire twist. And the nice part about our American fishing wire that we actually do is on the back of the actual packaging, you will see how to do your hay wire twist or an all bright. So it gives it to you there all on the packaging, which is very unique to our Kingfisher toothproof wire. I'm just going to close that one up, put him to one side. Um, secondly, I'm going to use the number seven, and I'm just going to cut our wire to the right length that I'm requiring. So the first one's going to be nine. So I'm just going to cut it there. And giving myself enough to work with so I can do two hay wire twists. The second one's going to be 16 or 15 centimeters, so I'm just going to measure that one out. So I'm going to make it about 25. And again, just so I can do my hay wire twists with it. The tools that we require to make it, a pair of good side cutters and round nose pliers. We take our round nose pliers our wire and we bend it down to make a circle. Now what we do is we take our power swivel, stick it through the eye, like that, take our round nose pliers and we just pinch the wire together and we keep these two arms exactly the same when we're twisting. So all we're going to do is wrap it around. So here we go. And we're going to do it five times. Once, twice, three, four, and five. And we keep it at the exact same angle. After the fifth one, we take this tag end, which is this arm here, and we bend it up 90 degrees to our wire. So there we go. It's 90 degrees to our wire that we've got. And we're going to turn it around six times. Once. Twice. Three. Four. Five. Six times. And we keep it as close as we can. To break it off or to finish off the actual um, trace arm, we're going to take this tag end and we're going to bend it 90 degrees back to us. You can use pliers. So I'm just going to go like that. So if you have a look there, you can see it. And all I'm going to do is go anti-clockwise. And if I go anti-clockwise, there it is. Broken off perfectly clean. There's no little bits that can actually hurt you when you're handing the trace at all. Next, we're going to do our treble hooks. Again, we're just going to take uh, our round nose pliers, bend it to form a circle, like that. Take our first treble, we go straight through it. And again, we're just going to grab it with the pliers, like so. And five times around, let's go. Remember, this is number seven wire. It's actually easier to work with than the number six because it's a lot harder. And we bend it up to 90 degrees and around six times. One, two, three, four, five, and six times. To break off the tag end, again, like so. Take your fingers, grab it, and go anti-clockwise. There we go. So that one's done. Over there. Next, 
We're going to do the long one, which needs to be about 15 to 16 centimeters in length to make it a medium. Again, exactly the same. And we go anti-clockwise with it. There we go. Let's make sure it's straight. There we go. So there is the second one done. Now comes the easy part. Take our Kingfisher luminous bead, slide it on the main wire all the way down. Grab it like so, twist at the appropriate length that you want it to be. So if it's 90, make it exactly 90. It's very simple. Lead hook, our mustard hoodlum, 2-0. Grab that, and again we're just going to twist it around six times. Okay, so that's that part of it done there. Now, the small one, to get it exactly right, we're just going to put it down and make sure of the length. And that's 90, so we're going to do it over there. Then I'm going to measure this one to give it my 15 centimeter mark. There we go. So that goes there. Okay. I'm going to start with the small one first. Now, when doing this, the best thing that you can do because all hooks have, when they actually manufacture them, go around and then come back to the R part here. In manufacturing, you could always have a defect where that R is not closed properly. So to prevent the wire from slipping through the R part, we take our first treble and we go between the wire and the actual hoodlum, the R. So we're going through the first one, which is the wire part, and then over the eye of the actual hoodlum hook, so that the wire is also holding on. And this prevents the wire from slipping through when you've got a fish on, okay. In the old days when the hooks weren't designed all that well, we did have a problem. These days it doesn't happen too often, but Rather safe than sorry. To finish this off, all we're going to do again is a haywire twist. And like I say, it's on the back of our American fishing wire packaging. Two, three, four, five. The second treble, which is our longer one, we're going to do exactly the same. The only difference here is we're going to go on the left hand side or the right hand side. If that's facing me, let me just put it this way. So it's facing me, so I'm going to go through the eye of the wire and through the eye of the hook. Alternative side, and again, grab it with our round nose. And there we go, guys. That's as easy as it is to make your own Kingfisher Cuda Trace for live bait. Okay, so there we go guys, there's the trace all done up. The reason we have such a long lead wire is if you get a big Cuda come and eat your actual trace, when he turns his head and comes back, the chances are good that you could have a lot of slack line when you do that and he can't bite you off because your lead is over here and the cooter can't bite you off. It's as simple as that, guys. That's why we use, that's why we make ours so long, our lead part. A lot of people make it a lot shorter. You do have a chance that the cooter could bite you off, but we at Kingfisher make it longer, so there's less chance of that happening. There we go. There's your made up live bait trace for catching cooter. Guys, Kingfisher Bait Clinic, part of this one. Um, it's showing you how to rig a live mackerel 
on our Kingfisher CUDA tracers. So there we go. One of our CUDA tracers that we've already pre-made. For live bait, I will show you quickly. There's the lead hook. That is a, the, the first treble, that is the second treble. Okay, so for a live bait, the best way to do it, take your, your lead hook, your mustard hoodlum. There is the nose area of your mackerel. So you've got your live mackerel, keep him upside down as much as possible, they actually go to sleep a bit. You go through the nose cavity part, straight out like that. Okay. Let's get the trebles quickly. Your first treble goes behind the peck fin over here. So what you do is you push that hook back, take your mustard four extra strong and slide it in just behind that little peck fin there. You see it? There's, there's a, the peck fin just behind it. Your second treble goes slightly beyond the halfway mark over there and just take your actual trace and lift it up a slightly. Push the two points into your actual live bait like so. Pull it straight so it's in under the skin. Don't stick it in deep, just go under the skin. And then your live bait little bead will come down. And that's pretty much how your live bait is going to be sitting when you trawl it. Just like that. It's very simple, very easy. Stick him in the water, you'll see he'll swim properly. And that's how you rig a live bait for kuta fishing. This is our kuta flasher. Um, we use four extra strong mustard hooks on it. Black in color for our mackerel. Our kuta flasher. To rig it, very simply for a dead bait, what we do is we go under the chin here, right in the front of the actual mouth, and pull it straight through. So this is for dead bait. Our second, or our first treble, just behind the pick. So what we do is just move it slightly um, to the right, go under the skin, and pull it. There we go. So when, it, when you pull it straight, that hook is 100% straight and that treble is not moving. The second one, we're going in the back and we just slightly move the nose, go in the back, pull that straight again. We then slide that down, over it, like so. There. We then take the tail part over here. To give it a bit more movement in the actual water, we just break that both ways. So that gives a lot more natural looking movement for a dead bait. And that's pretty much what it looks like when we pull it or drift it along behind the boat. It's as simple as that, guys. Now we do a lot of our traces with different colors. We've got chartreuse, We've got pink and we've got purple in our range of uh, kuta dusters that we use. The reason being, chartreuse is a very, very good color for overcast conditions, dirty water, or for down rigging. Our purple's exactly the same. It gives a darker silhouette. So again, purple is good for fishing down on the bottom, overcast conditions, or in dirty water. Our Clear skirts, pinks, stuff like that are ideal for bright sunshine on the surface and yeah, it's just a very good all-round colour for kuta fishing in clean water. Okay, so that's why we have so many different colours for our kuta traces that we make. Go out there, catch your kuta and enjoy guys.